Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog. I hope you're all doing really, really well. So today is episode two in my two episode series of reading other people's best books of the year. So we did reading booktubers best books of the year, which I will link below. And today we are doing reading your best books of the year. So super scientific method, absolutely robust reporting skills. I made an Instagram story and a community post on here and asked you all to tell me the number one best book that you read. A lot of people ignored that and listed about eight, but I admire your maverick spirit. And I pulled them all together into a database because that's just the kind of person I am. In order to collect the information that I needed to choose what books I was gonna be reading in this video. It was actually really interesting seeing them all coming in because there were some really early front runners where they shot to the top of the table and have remained at the top of the table, but then also there were some last minute Larry entries. It was all very exciting, but it's been a few weeks now since I posted those. I've chosen my books, they've arrived, and so let me talk you through the results. So I ended up with a list of 140 different books were submitted by people, which I think is really, really interesting. And maybe I'll do some other stuff in the future around that, or I'll post maybe like a full list somewhere. But what we wanna see is at the top of this table. We're really gonna be focusing on the top 12 in this list. And of that top 12, there's only three that I hadn't read, which I think is really, really interesting for a lot of reasons. Also, it's helpful, like I picked 12 because that's how many I had to go to to get three books I hadn't read because I wanted to read three books for this video. But also it's interesting that clearly I have very similar tastes or at least like pick up, I guess, similar kind of books as the people who filled this in, which should be helpful in whatever we're trying to take from it. So I'll run you through your top 12. So in number one was Know My Name by Chanel Miller, 11 people said that was their best book of the year, which is interesting because that was one of my best books of the year. That's not surprising to me. Then we had Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell with Seven, which is a book that I really, really loved as well. I read it in 2020. Then we had Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, which brings us on to the first book that I'm gonna be reading in this video. So this is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. She has arrived. This was the one that was a real latecomer. This one was not first when I was looking at it, in the early days of my stats taking what I thought I'd be reading and then it shot up and I was really pleased it did because I've been really excited to read this book. From what I know, it's set in Korea and it's like a historical fiction novel. I believe it's like intergenerational spans a long period of time. It's a family story I think and about a Korean woman who goes to Japan. And I know a lot of people have said this is a really sad book, but clearly people love it. So yeah, that was book number one. Then in fourth place on your list, we had Piranesi by Susanna Clark, which also had six people say it. And I enjoyed Piranesi. Didn't love it. It wasn't a favorite. I read that in 2021, but I enjoyed it. In spot number five, Betty by Tiffany McDaniel, which had five people choose it. And again, was actually one of my favorite books of 2021. I absolutely loved Betty. So I was pleased to see that on there. In spot six, we've got Real Life by Brandon Taylor which was one of my favorite books of 2020. Me and you, me and you guys, we clearly have a lot in common. That's why I think this is so interesting. Loved Real Life by Rand Taylor. Uh, four people chose that. Four people also chose My Brilliant Friend by Elna Ferrente, which the book itself, I wouldn't say was like a favorite when I read it, but like that series now is a favorite of mine. And I love the Neapolitan novels. So yeah, four people with that as well. Again with four people was Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson which I read in 2021 and loved. I think it's an excellent book. Didn't make it up to my favorites or anything, but I really loved it. The Death of Vivek Oji by Kweke Amezi had four, which I loved this book again, absolutely adored it. It didn't get on my favorites of 2020 because I read Freshwater in the same year and Freshwater was one of my favorite books, but I love Amezi, no surprise if you watch me a lot. In the number 10 spot with three votes was Freshwater by Kweke Amezi, as I've just said, a favorite book of 2020, love that book. And then in spots 11 and 12 with three, the ones that just snuck in to be on this list and to be what I'm reading. We have with three votes, Still Life by Sarah Winman. This is a book that I said, if you watched my reading booktuber's favorite books, this was a book I was gonna read for that because it was Simon's favorite book of the year and I didn't even count him in this, but then it won this and I needed to do it for this to make the maths work. So we're reading Still Life by Sarah Winman, not a book in honesty, I would have picked it up by myself. It's a historical fiction novel about World War II and I think like an unlikely friendship between a soldier and an art historian. 
And I just don't necessarily, I'm not a huge historical fiction reader and I don't really love books about the war, but it has been a favorite of a lot of people, not just here, but like I say, Simon, people I know in real life. And I am excited to try Sarah Winman. So this is the second book we're gonna be reading. And then finally with three as well, is Stoner by John Williams. I was really interested to see this on the list because yeah, it's a bit of a older book. A lot of these books really were published in the last two or three years, I guess, as part from um, My Brilliant Friend was a bit older, but this is this was published like in the 60s, I wanna say, or something like that. And it feels like a bit of a cult classic book from what I know about it. I really don't know anything about the plot and the blurb just says it's about William Stoner who his life is quiet and after his death, his colleagues remember him rarely. So it's not giving me loads, but I'm really interested to see why this was on there, how I'm gonna feel about it. Yeah, I do like reading some like properly backlist books. And I think this is a really interesting little three books I'm gonna be reading in this video. And I also thought it'd be interesting as we go through this video to have like your list in order. I mean, it's kind of like not exactly in order because like I say, a few of them got six or got four, or got three, but having your order and then my order at the start of the video and seeing where these three books slot into it, which means I need to now create my own order of these books of which I guess we've got nine so far. So let's do that now. I'll put it up on the screen. I am gonna put Know My Name first. It's the only nonfiction on here, which I think just gives it a very different experience, but also it's like a book unlike anything I've read before. So we're gonna go Know My Name first then Freshwater by Kweke Mezi. This is a favorite book of all time for me. I absolutely love it, it blew my mind. Then I think I'm gonna go Betty. Um, it's just a book I love, I love Tiffany McDaniel. It's a book I think about more and more all the time. Then I'm gonna go Real Life by Brandon Taylor, I think. It's been longer since I've read that one for sure, but I do still think it's such an interestingly written book and such an ambitious novel and I really love it. Then we're gonna put my brilliant friend but it is hard for me like i say to kind of remove the whole series from that when i'm thinking about it but we're putting my brilliant friend i still do love that novel then i think i'm gonna go vivek og the death of vivek og then hamnet then open water then piranesi i think that's gonna be my order and we will see how that changes as i read these three books and i'm really excited to see how it turns out hope you're excited to watch it so let's now jump forward in time to whenever I decided to pick up the first book. Hello, I have finished work and I have decided that the first book I start with is going to be Stoner by John Williams. I've honestly got no idea what to expect from this book. I barely know what it's about other than a quiet, normal man's life. Um, but I'm excited to see what all the fuss is about. So let's go. So I have been reading Stoner by John Williams. I'm 100 pages in and I feel like this is gonna be an interesting one. As I say, I basically knew nothing about this book before going into it. So interestingly, there's a little bit of a, I guess you could call it a prologue that literally is like, William Stoner, the main character, was born, went to this university, taught there for all his life, died. No one he worked with really remembered him. And that's the first thing you get. So it's almost like either intentional spoilers, where I don't know, you, you're knowing going in, he's not gonna go off on any crazy adventure he's not gonna when the first world war happens as it does go there but then also i'm like is it trying to present to me that nothing really happens in this man's life and it's about the smaller moments that happen we'll see so it's about this guy called william stoner who if i got pasta on my face quite possibly is born in like the late 1800s to a farming family in missouri him and his parents and he lives a very like rural bleak as you can imagine, late 1800s farming experience, goes to university in Missouri in 1910 to study agriculture, but then falls in love with literature and stays there. And I would definitely say this book took me I'm only 100 pages in, but a little bit longer to get into. The start of it was very kind of dusty. Like, you know, the like Dust Bowl American classic literature books that you get. It was just super bleak because we had him and his kind of empty life or how he perceived his empty life and then him going to university and struggling and being lonely and then the war happening and I was like oh is this going to be a bit of a Debbie Downer but actually it is starting to very quietly charm me it's definitely a very quiet book 
I would say that the writing is super considered. It's actually very accessible. Like there's nothing about this that makes it difficult to read, but it has this very quiet, like I say, very considered, notices the small moments, but isn't flowery, lays everything out, but kind of thinks about things, prose, which I'm enjoying. And I think kind of reflects William Stone as a character. He is a very unassuming, self-effacing, kind of, some might say boring, but in a way happy with that man. And I think that maybe the book is gonna make me really love him and really care about him. So as I say, he teaches at this university and I already know that's what he's gonna do for his entire life. But even now, 100 pages in, like we're going at his life at a fair pace. You know, we're about 10 years from when he started, if not more. And you know, he gets into relationships and there's a lot about his teaching and the people at the university. And yeah, I don't know, it's just a bit, charming like i'm very interested in it now and something about that very like calm measured writing style is appealing to me so interesting the only time i remember someone telling me like that they tried to read this book and just thought it was so boring and then kept reading it and ended up loving it and not that i thought it was boring i find that i never call a book boring or very rarely in fact actually people describe a book as being boring i'm like hmm sounds good let me pick that up but yeah maybe i'm having a similar experience at first i was also slightly concerned just because the last book i finished was any human heart by william boyd which is very similarly the life story of one man and i usually have sometimes have issues with a story that spans someone's whole life and also like spans someone's whole life in the 20th century a man i was like is it going to be too similar but it's so different in writing style and it's so yeah it's completely different so i don't need to worry about that so yeah i think i'll keep reading it tonight and i'm very intrigued as how i feel about this look at these beautiful flowers that alex bought me they're like lavenders and i guess daisies but because of the lavender it's like turned the water a really beautiful attractive aesthetic shade of brown um so yeah gonna chill gonna read owls at the footer also i got this candle it is from book of the month but it wasn't part of like when i did a video with them they just sent me a little i think they said they were sending it as a gift at the start of the year to anyone they'd worked with um and i got like a tote bag and stuff but i got this candle amber and vanilla and it says it's the smell of smells like freshly printed pages and unlimited possibilities i don't know what unlimited possibilities smell like but it really does it smells delicious and i really do get that like freshly painted pages thing so maybe I'll light this candle whilst I read. Hey, what's up? Hello, I'm about to go to bed. I am wearing my little penguin pajama top. And every time I wear it now, I'm just reminded of that commenter who was like, she is secretly working for Penguin, like, hun, if Penguin wanna pay me to be a gorilla booktuber, my DMs are open. But as of yet, no. Um, So I am now 200 pages into Stoner by John Williams. Have a lot of thoughts and I wanna do a little mask a little what is this origins drink up intensive overnight hydrating mask with avocado because she's looking pasty she's looking crusty she's looking dehydrated i don't even know what you meant to do with this oh okay so as i say i'm 200 pages in and i'm so in this book now like can't put it down the past 100 pages just flew by because i'm so invested in it and weirdly today i was thinking about someone's asking me oh like what books do you want for your birthday and i was like perusing my little shelves of potential books and i was like i bought one of those books where you just get kind of sucked in without even knowing to a character to like a family drama or something where it's really subtle but then you can't get away from it and that is what this book is giving i think it's actually really interestingly written because since that 100 page mark where i was like i'm just starting to be charmed by it i haven't been able to put it down and it seems like very episodic so since that 100 pages there's been like two and a half because i stopped halfway through almost like distinct stories within the narrative of william stoner that are within themselves there's one about his wife and his child and there's one about kind of his life as an academic at the university that are just like unput downable i guess like 30 to 50 pages episodes in this guy's life that are just so interesting and so well done and really just explore i don't know they're just like such good stories within themselves and i am like super obsessed now with the character of william stoner he's changed so much but you really warm to him you really like him his integrity his kind of quiet self-deprecacy i really love it it my only thing is it is still like a sad book and 
increasingly I'm like is this gonna be a really bleak book? Because I read a lot of like sad books where some people say, oh, you know, it's unrelentingly depressing, um, yada yada. Like they're not the same book at all in any way. But for example, the way people talk about A Little Life, whereas my thing is always like, oh, but there's so much hope and there's so much love in A Little Life. My face really red? No, it's just a shadow. This book, it's like the more you love William, every of these episodes, just makes his life so much worse in a really unfair way and you're really like frustrated because he hasn't done anything wrong and he is reaping the whatever the opposite of benefits is um and so i'm like coming back to that question of is this just going to be an unrelentingly bleak book that takes us closer to his death or is there going to be something else but regardless i love the writing i love the story i should have known should have known that you guys wouldn't put me wrong i'm really loving it and i will continue reading it tomorrow Tomorrow, gonna go into the office and I need to go shopping on my lunch break because it's my birthday on Monday. She getting, she getting on in the years and going out on Saturday night and I have nothing to wear and I just wanna feel a little bit nice for one night. So keep your fingers crossed for me that I find an outfit and I'll let you know when I finish this book. Hello, been to the office, had a busy day, found no clothes, <laughs> went for a drink with my sister, back home eating pasta gonna finish stoner that was my six second update good morning rise and shine does anyone remember that song rise and shine and give god his glory glory or was that just my catholic primary school life um today is thursday and both neighbors on either side of my terraced house are knocking on my walls i imagine because they're doing building work it feels like a personal form of torture but it will come in handy when I have my birthday party on Saturday, if anyone tries to bring me a noise complaint. Anyway, I finished reading Stoner last night and I really, 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 really enjoyed this book. Um, it's just, it's a slow burn for sure. Like I say, it kind of like hooks you in slowly, but then I just think it's a really gorgeous story. I thought it was really well written. It's super accessible. Like I don't think anyone would struggle to read this, but also quite, yeah, it's just really thoughtfully written, I think. And it is a character study, not to keep talking about any human heart, but it is sort of weird that I've read two back to back, basically like cradle to grave stories in the 20th century about men. Um, and it's not something I usually like. I don't like cradle to grave stories. Um, and I was like, oh, any human hearts just because it's so long. I mean, they're very different books, but this one as well, I don't know. I feel like without giving spoilers, like it's cradle to grave. You're told at the start he's gonna die. Even the ending, like it's a very sad book. And I said, I was a bit worried it would just be like unrelentingly sad. It isn't. And I do think the ending, it gets a bit like philosophical. And I think as much as it's sad because this man dies after living a fairly long life, it really is almost like comforting about the fact that like the inevitability of that and that we'll live a life and how we'll feel at the end of it. Um, made me a bit emotional actually. I turned down quite a few pages towards the end where I just thought there was really good quotes that were kind of about those feelings of, of life and, and about kind of love, like the loves he finds in his life. Yeah, just a lot of like looking back towards the end. So he says, almost without regret, he looked at her now. In the soft light of late afternoon, her face seemed young and unlined. If I had been stronger, he thought, if I had known more, if I could have understood. And finally, mercilessly, he thought, if I had loved her more, which I just think, it's very sad and this a kind of joy came upon him as if born in on a summer breeze he dimly recalled that he had been thinking of failure as if it mattered it seemed to him now that such thoughts were mean unworthy of what his life had been and yeah i just really really enjoyed it i think it's a super absorbing engrossing story i really felt like in this throughout and it's like a quiet story in the best way and i also think like the female characters are really interesting particularly his wife and his daughter we're not we don't get a lot of them um and we like them to varying degrees in terms of their relationship with Stoner. But I'd be really interested to read like an essay about the women and during this time and what that kind of says about being a woman. Although this is very much like a man's novel. I really liked it. Um, I can see why it's like a rediscovered classic. It's probably one of, I don't know, it might be up there in like my favourite modern classics now. I really enjoyed it and it was a surprise and thank you to the three people who said this was your best book of the year because i really enjoyed it now for the difficult bit of ranking it in my little list of if it was 11 or 12 it's hard because i can't remember if i said this like all of the books i enjoyed like there's nothing on that list 
that I didn't like. Most of them I loved. A lot of them have been like favourites in the various years that I've read them. So obviously we all have very excellent taste. It's like above Hamnet, definitely below Betty. Where's it gonna go? It's gonna go above Vivikoji. Is it gonna go above my brilliant friend? It's gonna go somewhere there and editing me can decide where. So now onto the next book, which is gonna be either Still Life or Pachinko, but I haven't decided which yet, so we'll find out when I pick up a book. Okay, so as I mentioned, I think it's my birthday on Monday, so having like people around on Saturday and they'll probably go out. And so me and Alex need to like clean and tidy the entire house, because it's not at the minute. Um, and so there's plenty of productive things I could do with this lunchtime, you know, tidying, cleaning, the things that really need to be done that will get done today. But can you see here, these books? I really wanna tidy my bookshelves and reorganize all my bookshelves. I'm really running out of space. If you can see, like, there's just a lot of stacked upness and all of these books that need to go on my shelves here. Um, and I'm thinking, because this is, like, non-fiction, and these are my unread books, and then that's just mess. I'm thinking, I also have this bookshelf, again, ignore the mess, that's just not, like, nice. <laughs> like, it's just all mess. And a lot of the books on here are like things I need to unhaul. And I'm like, do I make that like a really nice like TBR shelf and then use the other bookshelf? It's really not a priority and I know it'll take me longer than I think it will. But I think that's what I'm gonna do with my lunchtime is yeah, attempt to reorganize my bookshelves. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And whilst I do, I've been listening to an audio book, which is, it's called Ace by Angela Chen. It's about like asexuality. Cause I just thought, I don't really know a lot about that topic and it's interesting. So yes, this is probably a stupid idea, but let's do it. Okay, we now have like a lot of crime up here with all my faves facing out. And I've moved my TBR to here, which has created, I've literally created so much more mess. An entire empty shelf, basically. Non-fiction up here. This is like currently reading things I need to do with books. And then I've got all of these empty shelves, which means <laughs> I can move the top three shelves over there. I'll explain. So I like keeping authors together. So obviously very messy, but these three shelves are kind of like all the books that I have by, like more than one book by an author together. But I'm kind of running out of space. So I think I'm gonna move those over there. Okay, it's now like seven o'clock. I am finally done tidying and cleaning. Although I did sustain two nail traumas, look at him. And then this one, I don't know what's happened to you, but it hurts. I'm not out for having to do my own domestic chores. Uh, yeah, I'll show you my beautiful bookcases tomorrow in the light. Um, but yes, now I'm just chilling. I'm actually gonna go meet my friend for a drink, and then I guess I'll pick up a book tonight in bed. I really can't decide between Pachinko and Still Life. I was thinking Pachinko, but then I think it's gonna be sad. So maybe I'll go Still Life. Who can say? Hello, good morning. Oh, my lipstick looks very pink. I'm kind of like Valentine's colors. Do you want to see my shelves? I know you do. Here they are in the cold light of day. And I just think they look beautiful. And then over here, I have all of my like books that are together from like the same author. I love them. And the next door one's nice. So maybe now I'll actually be able to film a bookshelf tour if I can get someone, cough Alex, to help me. I also wanted to show you what I got for my mum for her birthday. It's my mum's birthday today. Um, and yeah, we decided, me and my sister, to get her a book subscription from Persephone Books. So Persephone Books published like out of print women who were published, I think like in the 20th century, maybe a bit before. And yeah, so she'll get like a book every month for six months and I picked the books. And the first one, they've just wrapped it so beautifully. I'm not sure if you know what Persephone books look like. They're like those gorgeous dove gray, like leather bound. And they have like these beautiful prints on the inside. So this is very cute. And then the catalog comes with it so that she can get more information about the books when she receives them. So I'm excited about this. I'm hoping that she enjoys this. Gonna give it to her later. And now I finish work and not back until Wednesday for birthday activities. So I'm going to start reading Still Life. I've got a few hours before I need to go out for mum's birthday dinner. So let's get started on Still Life. 
Oh my god, it's so cold in this house. Can it be summer yet, please? I am now 100 pages into Still Life by Sarah Winman. It is a bit of a chunky book. It's like 500 pages long, but it is a quick read. Um, and basically it's about, it's set like just at the end of World War II. For someone who doesn't like reading books about World War II, the last three books that I've read have all had like a fair amount of World War II vibes in them, which is interesting. And we're kind of start in Italy where this 60-ish year old woman called Evelyn Skinner who is an art historian meets briefly this soldier this English soldier called Ulysses Temper and they have a connection like not romantically like they really get on and they talk a lot about art and it's like a fleeting connection and then I think like they're gonna keep coming back into each other's lives so now we really have just been following Ulysses coming back to London after the war um, and there's a lot going on in his life like a kind of wife slash ex-wife and he works in this pub and yeah that's kind of what's happening at the minute at first I was like oh I'm not sure I haven't read any Sarah Winman before but particularly I think I'm not sure about her other novels but Things are moving like very quickly, um, lots of dialogue, not really much time to pause and see what's happening, particularly in the bits in Italy. And I was like, oh, I'm not sure this is gonna be for me. I do sometimes prefer like a bit of a more introspection, a bit more slow burn, but I will say it's highly entertaining um, and it's a really easy read and I am enjoying this like setup in London now um, even though like I said I don't really read that much historical stuff but it's a very entertaining cast of characters it's like a parrot who's just called someone to see you next Tuesday yeah it's like this sort of group of kind of found family vibes which is just quite fun to read about so I do think I'm gonna enjoy this I'm not sure it'll be a new favorite just from the hundred pages but who knows maybe I feel like it is gonna kind of tug on my heartstrings a bit I do quite like the relationship between Evelyn and Ulysses that we've briefly seen and which I imagine is going to keep coming up and yes it is fun and I'm enjoying it and I am going to get ready now for my mother's meal and then I might read some more. Ooh, it's dark in here. I'm off for a nice meal for my mum's birthday and then to be honest I'm not really sure when I'll speak to you next. Maybe you'll get some like montage vibes because mum's birthday meal tonight then tomorrow seeing some family for mum's birthday and then it's my birthday well my birthday night out um and i probably won't read so see you when i see you hello long time no see i haven't spoken to you since friday and today is thursday because a lot has been going on um i had a busy weekend of my mum's birthday my birthday which was super fun. Went out for an amazing dinner on Friday night, so the family on Saturday, then I had a party here on Saturday night with, for my birthday, which is literally just the most fun thing ever, had the best time, and then on Sunday saw some friends, then on Monday it was my birthday, but then I was struck down in the prime of Lyme by what I thought was the flu, I don't think it was, I think it was sinusitis, and I was so ill, still am if you can't tell, but, all of Tuesday, which is meant to be like my fun day off, all of Wednesday, I could not get out of bed, started feeling ill actually on my birthday. Um, and yeah, just like couldn't lift my head off the pillow, fever, swollen, sinuses, painful, sore throat, cough, she fit, she flirty. But yeah, so that was annoying because it meant that, I mean, I just didn't get to fully enjoy my birthday. I still had an amazing time. I didn't really film any like B-roll. I'm afraid you just have to take my word for it. But yeah, I wanted to like film videos on Tuesday and stuff. I couldn't do that. Um, and I do want to like show you some of the stuff I got for my birthday, but I think I'll do that tomorrow. I am feeling better today, like much better. I still feel bad, but like nothing compared to the last couple of days. So I'm doing some work today, which has gone all right. I'm just hopeful that tomorrow I'll feel better on Friday. I can like film my birthday book haul, which I'll, then I'll post like actually as a video, but also can show you some of the other stuff I got today. I think we're easing ourselves back in, but I did want to check in because I have got to the 300 page mark in still life and I'm probably going to read some more today. Um, so I wanted to check in before I finish it. And I'm really enjoying this book. It was actually a really perfect thing to start. I read like the 200 pages of it last night when I'd started to feel better. Um, and it was actually such a nice thing to read when I wasn't feeling well. Like I couldn't read before then because like I said, couldn't lift my head. But it's a very warm like story it moves fairly quickly there's always something going on which i'm enjoying and like i said you know after the 100 pages i'm not sure it's the type of book i usually read and maybe it isn't but 
it's a really nice change and I really like the way that Sarah Winman writes. I think that she creates really warm, really interesting characters. There's a lot about this idea of like found family um, in this book or about characters who, or people who find each other maybe in places you wouldn't expect. So both in terms of Evelyn and Ulysses, like they haven't met up again. And it's really, well, uh, one, on the one hand, I was like annoyed because I was like, oh, they keep like missing each other. Like I can't deal if this book is like that they never find each other again. But then the book like foreshadows that they will. So it's quite fun wondering about like when they're gonna meet again. So not only about their sort of relationship in that sense, but particularly with Ulysses, we get a lot from his perspective, his kind of found family. Um, and I love reading about Italy and yeah, just I find it a very funny book. The parrot is such a great character in it. I don't know, it's just very warm. Um, it's very like kind, if that makes sense. It's not setting up too many things just to upset you. It feels like it, I don't know, it's coming from like a positive place. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to, I think it's about 175 pages left and it is just really fun. I think Sarah Winman, yeah, I like her writing. She's funny. I really also love the character of Evelyn. We've had less of her, but she's a badass bitch. And yeah, I am enjoying it definitely more than I thought I would after 100 pages. So as I say, easing back in today, gonna do some work. Now at lunch, it's lunchtime though, and like I might read or I might watch The Hating Game on Amazon Prime. I haven't read the book and I don't want to. I've heard things about the film and I want like a shit film, not shit. I want like an easy rom com -y film to watch whilst I'm still not feeling the best. So maybe I'll start watching The Hating Game. Hello, it is now much later um, and I have on a birthday present for my sister that is just the best thing in the world. It's this like velvety track set, like loungewear from Chelsea Piers, which is where all of my really soft pajamas are from. And honestly, it's so soft and cozy and could not have come at a better time as I have not been wearing normal clothes when I've been ill. I also, I allowed myself to re-download TikTok because I deleted it a few weeks ago because I was like, oh, no, she addicted. Um, because I've been doing a lot of just like lying around without the capacity for anything else. I was like, that's perfect for TikTok. And now I feel like for the rest of my life, I'm going to associate sin sinus infections with, I was Josh Safdie's muse when I wrote Anchor Jams. Uncle Jam, like scrolling through TikTok. I don't know when this video is going to go out. This is probably like such old news, but it's just consistently Uncle Jams, Uncle Jams. And I already am having like really bad fever dreams, which I always have when I'm ill, where like something gets stuck in my head and just like repeats and repeats and repeats all night. And Uncle Jams, Uncle Jams. Anyway, now that I've updated you on the Jim Jams and the Uncle Jams, I also can update you on the fact that I finished reading Still Life by Sarah Winman. And I really enjoyed this book. Um, I cried multiple times reading that last like 200, 175 pages. And I think this is just such a beautiful story. I think this was the perfect thing to read in February, the perfect thing to read if you're not feeling great. I'd really highly recommend this book to people if you want a little bit of like cheering up it is just overwhelmingly like i was kind of saying life affirming and uplifting but simultaneously like it is still real you know there were still parts of it that i cried out because they were sad but it was definitely one of those stories that makes you fall in love with characters and sets up relationships not to tear them down to make you upset if that makes sense and yeah it's definitely out of my usual comfort zone i don't read a lot of historical fiction but i like the way that really the historical events are just the backdrop and it's such a character focused story it's really about this group of like five or six people and actually the way the world is changing in the background and the things are happening just allows you to see like the passage of time and there are really interesting moments that she pulls out um for example like the flood in the 1960s in florence and when all the volunteers came in to help, that's a piece of history I didn't know a lot about. And I found that really, really interesting. And yeah, I'm just, I really just fell for the characters. And I think Sarah Winman is just such a good writer. This book really made me laugh. Um, I enjoyed its sense of humour. I loved the characters. I just loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Um, and I'm really glad that I read it. And I can see why it was so many people's favourites. I would say that it like ends. And I was like, oh, I've still got like 40 pages left. And we kind of go... So we've been going like chronologically and then the last 40 pages we go like back in time with Evelyn, like really back in time to like the start of her story. And I do think that took away from a bit of the impact, like the way it ended was so emotional for me. And then like, I feel like she'd say women just wasn't sure where else that bit of 
Evelyn's life would fit in, which I can appreciate, but yeah, that's mainly my only criticism. Um, and it is a little bit, well, it is like a very sentimental pull on your heartstrings story, but I was here for it. I honestly, I'm finding it so difficult to do this like ranking because all of these books I'm really enjoying and I'm enjoying them in very different ways or I've read them, you know, ages ago and I've just read it and I do find that when I've just read, when I've just read a book, it is like more fresh in my mind. So I think still life, I'm gonna put, okay, I'm gonna put it above Hamnet which controversial because I, I know Hamlet's a big favourite and I really did enjoy Hamlet but and I think this is a good comparison actually because Hamlet's also a historical novel and I loved Hamlet don't get me wrong absolutely made me cry thought it was beautifully written but I preferred still life I think so there you go so now I oh yeah I think I'm gonna I did start watching The Hating Game and obviously I've never read the book so I don't have like a lot to compare I know a lot of people didn't like the character of Josh and thought he wasn't like true to the book I think I can believe them fancying each other like clearly i like the orders for the hating game i'm only halfway through but i like that they like kissed immediately they didn't like drag out for ages it's like oh they hate each other although they are kind of still doing that um i cannot with him calling her shortcake makes me want to be sick hate it hate that hate that for me um but yeah i think i'm gonna go and watch the end of the hating game and then i might pick up pachinko tonight it's like eight o'clock um but i am pretty tired but yeah pachinko is the last book to read so at some point i'll be picking that up good morning i am still feeling oh, right i look bright blue because it's like the storm weekend i can't remember what storm it's now eunice or something and so it's properly like rainy and gray and i will not be leaving the house today um yeah i am feeling a little bit better put a little bit of tiny bit of makeup on so that in my work meetings i don't terrify anyone like i did yesterday someone was like oh god oh god oh, um and are you feeling sorry not to? I was like, I know it's fine, I look disgusting. But yeah, still a, a wee bit snotty. Um, but yes, happy Friday. Also look at how beautiful all my flowers are that Alex got me these daffodils. And then I got for my birthday, this like gorgeous vase with these dried flowers in. And I love dried flowers and I just love that vase. I think it's stunning. In fact, why don't I quickly show you some things I got for my birthday. I showed you my PJs, my like loungewear last night and just showing you the the vase, which is off my friends, who also got me the um, planner that you will have seen if you watched my birthday book haul, this GK Reads planner, which I'm just obsessed with. Um, and then Alex got me a watch. So he got me this watch, which I love. It's gorgeous. I always had like a metal, like square watch for years and I loved it. And then the battery like kept breaking in it. And then I got a like leather strap watch, but then the sun bleached one side of it and then it was locked down and I just stopped wearing a watch around the house. But now I've really noticed that I'm like missing my watch again. Um, so I got this beauty and I do like a metal one. Although when Al gave it to me on my birthday, I like tried to put it on and we obviously hadn't checked if it was dyspraxic friendly and I could not get it on. Like Alex was like, right, every morning I'm gonna have to put this on. Cause it's like, you have to like thread the little clasp through. However, I put it on all by herself this morning. It only took me five full minutes. And then my boss got me this mug. I love it so much. That says Lizzie, Jane, Mary, Kitty, Lydia. And it's a Pride and Prejudice mug. It's from Bookishly, apparently. And I just feel like you can never have enough mugs. And as a Pride and Prejudice stan, just such a good mug. Um, and then I also wanted to show you a card I got off my best friends. I'm upset. This is the best card I've ever received. Colin birthday and they said inside like I doubt we'll be the first or the last to have bought this card but we couldn't resist because it's just well known that I am a Colin for Stan Alan. but yeah so a good little birthday haul got some great stuff there but now I feel the birthday the birthday vibes are officially over which is fine can't always be birthday uh but yeah um oh yeah what else to update you on finished the hating game last night. It's not for me. It was enjoyable in that like I love watching rom-coms like that and it was easy watching. I thought it was shot well. I like Lucy Hale. I thought the man actor seems like a nice man but just as like shadiness. They have some issues. So for starters the whole like hate each other but then they just love each other or at least he's like horrible to her and then he loves her and then for some reason she can't understand that he clearly likes her even though like from after the first five minutes of the film he's so nice to her why would she be confused about that also like if he wasn't so good looking would we find it 
as sweet that he basically stalked her. Like, there's being really into someone and it being like, oh my God, I've always fancied you. And then there's writing little peas when they wear pants in your notebook and painting your wall the color of their eyes. For me, I find that quite uh, disturbing. Also, I have serious issues with the way that publishing company is run. It don't make no sense. I think that's all. Apart from the fact that my sister, for all you Wordle fans out there, Liv got the Wordle in one yesterday. How does it feel? Live my dream, bitch. Also, I started Pachinko last night, but now I really do have to go do some work. So I'll update you on Pachinko later. Hello, it's now after work. It is wild out there. We are in no way in like the worst. In fact, I think like the northeast of the country is probably the least stormy um, compared to like the southwest, but it's wild out there. And I keep seeing videos like of it like trees coming down and stuff and it freaks me out so much like that's so scary i hope everyone's staying inside this weekend yes as i mentioned started pachinko last night by minjin lee and i'm 100 pages in and so far really enjoying it i think i'd said like i always thought this was like a multi-generational story where you kept shifting from person to person i'm not sure why i thought that i think because i've heard it described as like a saga but actually i think it's just a, gonna be about this one family who we've met in the first part which i guess it still could go into the future we've had some of the past am i making any sense basically so we start in korea in the early 1900s and this guy called huni is his parents own like a boarding house and he has a cleft palate and he has like a club foot i think it is i'm not sure if that's still what you call it and so they've never thought he would get married but then the matchmaker comes and is like actually you could marry this girl um who's from a really poor family who's 15 so they get married and have like a pretty decent life together seem to really care for each other have a daughter who they both really love and then who he dies and that all happens within like the first couple of pages to just set up the situation which is yanjin and Sunja, that's what she's called, Yangin and Sunja, so Yangin being the wife and Sunja being the daughter, who now operate this boarding house together. And yeah, that's kind of their life. And so with them, I think it's like the 1930s in Korea. Obviously it's under colonial rule by Japan. And I guess what kind of spurs on the story is a man who arrives at the boarding house who is Korean, but he's on his way to Osaka in Japan. And I don't feel like I'm only 100 pages in, it's over 500 pages. I don't really feel like it's spoilers to say that for various reasons, which I won't say why, he ends up deciding that him and the daughter, Sunja, will marry and she will go and live with him in Japan. And then that's literally where I'm up to now. It doesn't feel like huge plot things have happened, like interesting plot things have happened. But yeah, I feel like we've just laid the groundwork, but in a really solid way. Like I feel like I have a really solid understanding of the characters, of the writing style, which I'm really enjoying. It's just... I found it immediately absorbing and a really good mix of being quite like objective and distanced so you can get a sense of like what is happening and as if this is a story you're being told but then kind of zeroing in into the mind of a character so particularly this man whose name escapes me and Sunja and going like into their minds and I'm really interested I've read quite a few Korean books but usually more contemporary and I'm really interested to read more about this very specific point in time in the relationship between Korea and Japan like that kind of colonial relationship and um, so I'm looking forward to that I'm interested to see like where this kind of relationship is going to go and if it is then going to be like the legacy of that family if we're going to stay with them and yeah I just found it very immersive really enjoyed the writing and I'm keen to keep reading it so far so good but yeah it's Friday night and I'm sure I will I'm gonna read now before I'll get home and then not doing anything tonight because I still don't feel very well. So it's gonna be like a proper last year lockdown Friday night, I think, where we're gonna eat together and then chill together. And then Alex is gonna go play video games with his friends and I'm gonna read my book. No more storm, blue skies. Hello, good morning. It's not morning, it's the afternoon, it's Saturday. I really didn't feel very well last night. <laughs> Shock. Uh, Every day I'm like definitely feeling better today and then I'm like, oh no, psych, but maybe today is the day where I actually feel better. Had a chill morning um, of tidying the house, listening to Taylor Swift, doing the dishes. It's been, it's been pretty exciting, not gonna lie to you. Um, but last night I got up to the, I think I'm like 200-ish pages into Pachinko now and still really, really enjoying it. It's made me think like, why do I think I don't like historical fiction? I think that maybe what I mean is I don't like like super super historical fiction we're talking like pre 20th century that would make sense 
or maybe i don't know with this i'm just like super immersed in the story really interested by the characters um and this is a really it's actually a really pacey read um for how long it is pacey is not the right word but like it doesn't feel like it's lagging at any point despite being long um and i think it definitely takes its time but yeah i'm just i'm really in it and so i wonder is it things about when they're too i don't love books that are too like world buildy or i feel like sometimes maybe historical fiction is a lot about that i don't know it's it's making me think but no i'm really enjoying it it's definitely a very like feminist book uh we follow mainly like the female characters so sunja and then when she gets to japan another woman who's kind of in her new family um and it is really i think definitely looking at like the place of women in this society but not just women but definitely like looking at the colonial relationship between japan and korea and seeing how like women are fitting into that but then also seeing how like korean men fit into that um so there's parts where you're really you know the female characters don't have a lot of agency and it's really frustrating the way that they are perhaps treated slash perceived but then equally you see the way that the men the korean men feel like they don't have agency in japan because of the colonial setup i think that's really interesting and i also think it's really interesting i really like the way that min jin lee is exploring that dynamic between sort of your normal japanese person and your normal korean person both trying to just work and you know make a better life in the way that the japanese everyman maybe doesn't think of themselves as a colonizer or as an oppressor they do think of themselves as better than the koreans but that that is just almost like a fact um and you know they'll still be kind to them but like oh you know like we have to help them try and be as good as us and i think that's really interesting when you see the two sides of that in like a small interaction between i don't know a factory manager who's japanese and then the foreman who's korean or a japanese man who works in the police office and a korean man who's trying to talk to the police about oppression i think that's really interesting and the bit i'm in now is in like the 1940s and it's interesting thinking about japan korea like the east in relation to world war ii um there's some interesting stuff about like religion and religious oppression and yeah i'm really enjoying it interesting characters looking forward to see where it's gonna go and i will continue to read i am gonna leave the house today exciting times i'm gonna go out with our friends and their puppy and maybe go to the pub and then go back to my friends get a takeaway maybe make some cocktails play with the dog so that should be a nice saturday easing me back into the land of the living um and also one of my friends who i'm meeting similarly contracted the sinus infection for my birthday party so do you know who patient zero was but there's three to four people now who all got it and so my birthday was a super spreader event for sinus infections being a super spreader event for covid is just like so 2021 it's all about super spreading the sinus infections in 2022 so yeah that's the plan <laughs> Look how popping my daffs are. Yes, bro. Um, yes, it is Sunday. I had a nice evening, afternoon, evening yesterday with our friends and as you saw, Lenny the dog, love of my life. And actually, it's even more dog heavy day because today we're dog sitting for some of Al's friends. Um, I've been at my parents. I think he's taken her out for a walk, even though it's really rainy, but yeah, there's a little poppy here today, which is just a great way to brighten up a Sunday so I'll see if I can get a little video here when they return from their walk this morning I got up to like the 350 60 page mark in Pachinko so I still got like 170 or so 160 maybe pages left but I think this will be the last time I check in before the end unless like something major happens and i'm just enjoying reading this book so much it reads so i want to say like fluidly like i find it just so easy to read it doesn't feel like it's just effortless i think in its storytelling and it is spanning a fairly long amount of time you know we met yang jin and sunja um at the start of the novel in like the i don't know when it was the earlier 1900s and now we're with sunja's children i mean she's still a character as well but now she's got these grown-up children um 
and we do get a lot of detail at every kind of step of the way and it's all very considered in its storytelling but I'm still just really really interested in it and I think I feel like I've seen these characters grow up and change and it's made me really invested in them and the, the boys, her sons, are really interesting characters who I really enjoy reading about and I think that the book really is just kind of over a long space of time and exploration of that relationship between Korea and Japan and I was really struck by the fact that it's kind of mentioned at one point like these these men these boys who are now following have never even known Korea like they've only ever been brought up in Japan and how that would be what that would kind of be like to be a young person in the 60s and to not have that sense of what home is amongst all the kind of you know the colonial issues and then the war and then post-war like Korean war and yeah it's just really really interesting I would say like all I ever hear when I hear people talk about this book is that it's really really sad and it hasn't been like super sad yet like it's sad things have happened but it hasn't been like kind of thing that would make someone say this book is so sad which is what I always hear so it's kind of making me scared for this last bit it makes I feel like shit's about to go down and some stuff has happened that I would say are setting it up to be very sad so maybe I'll end up crying today, who knows? But yeah, it's just, it's good, it's a good book. Also, it's just such a beautiful book. I absolutely love this copy. So yeah, I'm gonna read this and wait for the dog to get home. Look who it is. Boo, boo. She hates me. Boo, boo. Is <gasps> Hello, <laughs> look how cute you are. You're a bit soggy, aren't you, little soggy doggy. <laughs> I just gave the dog a heart attack because I just gasped so loudly at what just happened in this book. What the hell? Sorry, boo. What is in this pile of blankets? Oh, it's boo. Boo. Hello, so boo has gone home. We are now dogless, childless again. Um, and I finished reading Pachinko. It's been a very chilled out Sunday. Um, and I've loved having this book with me because I have really, really enjoyed this book so much. I think it is such a good story. I think that Min Jin Lee's done such a good job to keep you so kind of wrapped by it. Um, and kind of just, yeah, everything I said before about, I think the way it explores that relationship between Korea and Japan is so interesting. And I really love what it's saying about kind of family and legacy. I will say that in the, towards the end, when we're on to like another generation now of children, like one child in particular, I definitely wasn't as connected to him as a character because I just hadn't had that time that I'd had with the others, but I understand why he was in there to explore like those ideas of as time goes on and you know, it's in like the eighties, still how those questions of belonging um, and being Korean in relation to Japan, um, and again, being someone who is so far away from being Korean, but then is only seen as in Japan as being Korean and is like judged that, judged by that. I ha I totally understand why that's in there, but I wasn't like as obsessed and into him as I had been the other characters. Um, and this book is really sad. It's sad in like a quiet, bleak way, but it's also really beautiful. I nearly cried right at the end. The end really pulled me back in because one of like the central character relationships I can't give any spoilers, but like that was just so sad and heartbreaking. I thought it was beautiful. And I love that we stay with Sunja throughout the book. Although we explore her family, I think she's an amazing character. Just really interesting. And yeah, I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. I can't wait to read more from Min Jin Lee. I think this is her only novel. Oh no, she's got one, another, another, another novel. And yeah, I thought she was a brilliant writer. Just such a good storyteller. And I loved it. So the question is now, where does it rank on my list? And this list is so hard to do, which I think is a good sign. Um, I'd probably give this book, it's like a strong four star, maybe a bit higher. I'm not sure that it's a five, but it could be. I just find it so hard to rate books at the minute. I think I'm gonna put it, I can't decide. I think I'm gonna put it just below The Death of Vivekoji. But again, like I read some of these books ages ago, but I think that's where I'm gonna put it. So I think that I'll put the list up, but of the three new books, I think Stoner was my favorite. That was a really special book. But then to be honest, so is this and so is Still Life. I've loved all three of the books I've read, which I think is the important thing. You'll have good taste. You have very, very good taste. And thank you so much for participating, getting me to read these books because I love them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do let's chat in the comments. I'm gonna have an 
edit this video and have an early night because I'm still feeling ill. Cough, cough, I'm sick. But yeah, obviously I would love you subscribed. My Instagram, my storygraph will be linked down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.